Word of our testimony. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you all. Thank you for being with us. Amen. This morning on Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. A great day in the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Amen. And uh, we thank you, all of you that have uh, continued to support the, the church. And I, I am so grateful to all of you. And uh, you've done a great job. And I'm just uh, very blessed, amen, to be a part of this church and the people that are part of it as well. Amen. It's been great and uh, been difficult. But hey, it's uh, tough times, you know, are made for tough people. Praise the Lord. So toughen up. Hallelujah. We're going to be all right. Glory to God. It's all good. Amen. And uh, God is for us. Amen. Thank the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Uh, before we get into the, the more serious and meaty matters, amen, and I'm excited about that. This is the most powerful day of any year. And we have it. We can take it with us every day, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. But this morning, there's a lot of young people and uh, children, I expect maybe even a few adults that are out looking for eggs in the rain. Praise the Lord. I don't get it, but uh, amen. I'll just ask you a couple of questions here. Speaking of bunnies, um, this is really about the Lord, but we know God's good. I mean, uh, he said, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, a little fun. Amen. He's all for it. He likes us to enjoy ourselves. Amen. And uh, so what's a, what's a bunny motto? It's perfect because I've got this, don't be mad, be hoppy. Praise God. Cheer up out there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I got an amen from the, from the, from the back. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's not good because all that does is encourage me. Praise the Lord. Do you hear about the egg-laden rabbit that uh, jumps off of bridges? Uh, he's the Easter bungee. Praise God. Well, how about the guy who, who complained about his rabbit stew? He said, waiter, there's a hair in my soup. <laughs> Thank you. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm into animals. That's it's good for me. What do you call a rabbit with fleas? Bugs Bunny. Come on. You grew up with this guy. The oh, Lord. All right. This, I'll, I'll spare you with this one. How do you know if you've been visited by a possessed rabbit? He leaves deviled eggs. <laughs> Praise God. Thank the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay, well, you survive that, you're going to be all right. Praise God. So we're excited about what God's doing in these days. Amen. And though the enemy, amen, comes in like a flood, the Lord lifts up a standard. Praise the Lord. And, and it's all good in Jesus. Hallelujah. So I just want to say it's resurrection morning. Hallelujah, and it's glorious. Praise God. That's something I'll be repeating a little bit, but it is. It is all the songs that uh, Suzanne was sharing with you and you, you worshiped with this morning. All about the glory of God. All about resurrection morning and the power, amen, that is just uh, permeating from this reality. Praise the Lord. So I, we'll go right to the Word of God now. And uh, before I do that, though, let me just stop for a second. And, and again, thank everybody for participating in the worship this morning. I want to especially thank uh, Mike and Suzanne. For all of their work, they're not just be here on Sunday mornings to run the, the videos and stuff and the technical end of this, but they're working throughout the week to try to make things work the way they should and to make it a little easier for you to be able to participate and uh, make it a little easier on me so I don't have to stress over it. So I appreciate them so much, and i just uh, just praying God's blessing on them as well as all of you that are a part of the church. Uh, extended now a little bit uh, away geographically, but we're all together in the Spirit. Amen. And that's all that matters. Praise the Lord. We'll get back to the to the old ways of doing things eventually. But in the meantime, we're just going to take advantage of the blessings that God has provided for us to be able to share the gospel with anyone who wants to be a part of it. And so we bless you this morning and thank you again. Praise the Lord. So with that, let's go directly to the word of God. And I want to start this morning with a, a verse from Isaiah chapter 61 and verse three, Isaiah 61 and then verse three. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, 
that they might be called trees of righteousness. Now pay attention to this, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Praise God. All right, then let's go to John chapter 19 and verse 41 and 42. John 19, 41 and 42. Praise the Lord. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new sepulcher, wherein was never man yet laid. There laid they Jesus, therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulcher was nigh at hand. Chapter 20 and verse 1. Still John. John 20 and verse 1. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 9. Praise the Lord. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. That word literally translates God's garden. Praise the Lord. Ye are God's building or dwelling place. Hallelujah. So again, it's resurrection morning. Amen. And it is glorious. Hallelujah. Amen. What else can you say about Easter? I mean, seriously, there's no way to adorn it. You can't dress it up. Amen. Uh, gifts aren't necessary. Romantic cards are not necessarily appropriate. Praise the Lord. Lights strung on the house can't really illuminate it. Amen. Firecrackers are nothing compared to the earthquake and the roar of that stone rolling back from the tomb. Praise God. Amen. There's nothing louder than life. Amen. There's nothing more glorious than resurrection. Celebration really is a diluted and, and overused word. But what else can you say about Easter than celebrate? Yeah, celebrate. Amen. Sing, shout, dance, praise, laugh, enjoy it. It's a gift from God. Amen. Risen. Jesus Christ is Lord. And He's seated high above all. He is risen, praise the Lord. Amen. And no shadow of fear can withstand the brilliance of the sun. S-O-N, rise. Hallelujah. Amen. All the shadows of the limits of the flesh. They have to fade. Amen. Doubt. Fear. Unbelief. Bondages. Amen. Anybody who can handle death as effectively as Jesus has is more than able to conquer anything that comes against us. Praise God. Amen. The Son of God and the Son of Man. Jesus merges both spheres. Amen. The spirit and the natural. Amen. God's infinite power and humanity's infinite need. Jesus is Lord over weak flesh, even yours and mine. Jesus is Lord over failure, even ours. Praise the Lord. Jesus is Lord over life's question marks over uncertainties, over seasons of confusion and disorientation and ignorance about where we're headed. All these piled up clouds of anxiety are scattered to the winds by the cry, He is alive. He is risen. Praise the Lord. And anybody who can descend into hell, into death, and conquer that, and the devil, amen, and then ascend into heaven, he deserves my vote, amen, of confidence about handling my future and whatever it holds. Praise God. You know, it's weird because religion is uh, predictable. And it wants to be able to predict everything and have control of everything. But I tell you, I have to laugh at people who want God to be predictable. Praise the Lord. Uh, we know what God has already done and provided for us, amen. It's all based on his word. But how? Does he perform it? That's the unpredictable aspect of God, and I love every bit of it. Amen. To some, you know, it's not fair for God to act suddenly, powerfully, dramatically, or conclusively. Those people would have him prepackaged in a plastic container of some kind that you could just look into it at each issue that might face your life at any point and then decide whether or not they want to embrace it or not. Praise the Lord. That's not how life works. That's not how God works. Amen. Easter is God's answer to this symptom of human fear. In the resurrection, God is making an explosive declaration that we are not only ignorant of his limitless power, 
we're also ignorant of his limitless creativity in performing those powers, amen, in his methods. Who would have expected the resurrection? The answer in Scripture is obvious. Nobody. Amen? Not even those that Jesus had specifically stuck to aside and explained what he was going to do. Amen? He, he was specific about it. He was clear about it. Amen? And yet, they were caught off guard. He told them, but they didn't listen. And we can be like that sometimes. He's given us his word. But what are we listening to? CNN? Fox News? Amen? You know what I'm saying? The neighbor? Somebody on Facebook, online? You know? No, we need to be listening to him. And we'll only hear, it seems like, if, if he does what we expect him to do, the way we expect him to do it. Amen? We may wish for, we might even dream of the unexpected. Amen? But it's easier to believe what we expect. Amen? Isaiah 28 and verse 21. These are difficult times. I'm not doubting that. I'm not questioning that. But I'm telling you what, we have a risen Savior that has overcome the world. That includes a virus. That includes anything that this world can throw at us, including the devil, amen, and his imps. Jesus has defeated him. And he is risen, praise the Lord. So he says, for the Lord shall rise up as in Mount Perizim. He shall be wroth as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his strange work, and bring to pass his act. His strange act. Hallelujah. I love that. That's a potent promise, man. I mean, if you've ever had one. And it's a, a commentary on God's unpredictability. Amen. That word strange doesn't mean bizarre. It doesn't mean weird or, or freaky. Amen. The Hebrew word it means unusual or coming from an unexpected source. Praise the Lord. The example given by the prophet Isaiah here illustrates it. Mount Perizim refers to when... God gave David this huge victory by breaking forth like a flood tide over David's enemy armies. It washed them away. They were there. He was going to be defeated. And all of a sudden, God shows up, and the enemy's gone. Amen? Just that quick. Praise the Lord. David didn't expect that. He just expected God to do something for him. He didn't know how he was going to do it. He just believed that he would. And he trusted, and God did it in an unusual way. Amen? A strange way, the scripture says. So the valley of Gibeon then refers to the day that the sun stood still. Remember the, the story about Joshua and the children of Israel, and they're fighting this great army, and they had about had them defeated, but if they couldn't keep the, keep the battle going during daylight hours, they might lose, and the enemy could regroup and come back against them again the next day. So the, the sun stood still in the heavens to give Joshua and Israel's army the opportunity to complete this victory, amen, this triumph, over their enemies, praise the Lord. And both cases speak to victory in adversity. Amen. Amen. Both were strange, unusual. They were unpredictable ways for God to move. As unpredictable as winning a battle you don't actually fight. Praise the Lord. Where the enemy is swept from your path by a tidal wave of God's power rolling out ahead of you. Or as unpredictable as the sun standing still. I mean, that's strange. I've never seen it, praise the Lord. But not as strange as the rising of the dead. Amen. Amen. That's the strangest of all. Empty graves are in a league by themselves. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus' resurrection categorically excludes any hopelessness in any situation and includes anybody who's open to him. Praise the Lord. When shadows crowd us, praise God. When hope fades, Life expectancy can rise again. Easter is the evidence that such expectations are reasonable, amen, expectations. Hallelujah, because God can do anything God will do, amen, based on His Word, any way He wants to do it. Hallelujah. Let's look at this in Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 3. Amen. Cheer up. God is on the throne. Jesus has risen. Amen. He can do it any way he wants to do it, but he will do it. Amen. If we believe, if we have confidence in this resurrected Savior. Praise God. So when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. Very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? Amen. It was a great stone. It was a huge, heavy stone. Tons it weighed. Amen. And it was sealed by the Roman authorities. Amen. And it was too much for these women to move. And yet they still came to the 
tomb as though they would move it. Amen? That great stone is a reminder, amen, of what looked like an insurmountable problem, what looked like an insurmountable trouble and questions in our lives and our difficulties, amen, weaknesses, fears, stresses, and pains, hallelujah. The stone in the garden was real, just like our issues, amen, are real today, amen. The stone in the garden was enormous, just like the issues we face today, praise the Lord. It was under constant guard, just as we are confronted constantly by Satan and his demon darkness, praise the Lord. When they reached the tomb, the stone was rolled away, praise God. Entering the tomb, they saw life in the place of death. Amen. They saw heavenly message, messengers, excuse me. They saw heavenly messengers in place of hopelessness and corruption. You'll never have to worry about moving tomorrow's large stones if you'll let Easter happen where you are today. Amen. Recognize the resurrected Savior. Hallelujah. He's all we need, praise the Lord, for victory in any situation and every circumstance. Glory to God. Let's look here in John uh, chapter 20, verse 11 and 12. John 20, 11 and 12. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's resurrection morning and it's glorious. Hallelujah. Amen. But Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher and seen two angels in white sitting one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. So it's, it's interesting to me that well, let's just drop down to verse 15 real quick. We'll, we'll take a look at this too. Verse 15. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Because she's looking around and she's thinking he's the gardener. She sees this guy, but she doesn't recognize him as Jesus. And she thinks it's the gardener. And she, she says, uh, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I'll take him away. Well, it's interesting because everything Jesus did in his redemptive work he did in a garden. Amen? When Mary went to the tomb, the stone is rolled away. She peeks into the tomb, and she sees these two angels there. One of them standing at the head and the foot of where Jesus had lain. Amen? And she sees this, and, and uh, it's a picture of the Ark of the Covenant. It's a picture of the mercy seat. Amen? Have you ever seen where the angels are on the Ark, they're, they're one on each end of it, and they're bowed down? Amen. Jesus is our propitiation for sin. Amen. Propitiation is translated simply mercy seat. Oh, hallelujah. I'm, I'm feeling it. Hallelujah. What Mary saw Easter morning in that garden tomb was the real Ark of the Covenant. Hallelujah. Not a shadow from the Old Testament, but the reality of what that represented. Hallelujah. And remember, God put angels east of the garden. Amen. Uh, after Adam and Eve had sinned. And that wasn't to keep man out. It was to protect the way of the tree of life. Hallelujah. Those angels there weren't there to keep humanity from coming to Jesus. Those angels were there to protect the tree of life. Jesus is the tree of life. Hallelujah. Once we partake of Jesus, we have everlasting life. We have eternal life. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. The ark Moses made was a shadow of what Mary saw in that tomb. He is our mercy seat. He is our propitiation. Hallelujah. He literally is our everything. Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. Jesus was crucified in a garden. His tomb is in a garden. Where else would you plant an incorruptible seed except in a garden? Praise God. When Mary saw Jesus after his resurrection and said, I thought you were the gardener, he was the gardener. And the first fruits of that garden... Glory to God. Hallelujah. He put us back in a finished work. Hallelujah. Amen. Where all we have to do is guard and keep what he has accomplished. Amen. And, and he accomplished that through his death, burial, and resurrection. Praise God. We are now not only the, the harvest that's coming forth, but we are the harvesters that are coming forth in the power of his resurrection. Somebody ought to be saying, glory to God, I believe in you are. Glory to God. Amen. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9 quickly. 1 Corinthians 3 and 9. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's garden, his dwelling place. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. The garden where he planted incorruptible seed, the Word of God, Jesus himself. Oh, man, I'm telling you, if you can see this, what God has done is so magnificently, perfectly thought out and planned out. We could never dream of something like this. It's unexpected. It's unusual. It's strange. But it's God, and it's God's way. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a resurrection dimension to life, too. Amen. And it's wrapped in words. Hallelujah. In the words of, look at Romans chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. He was a man. And declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Jesus was a man, died, and came up. He's God. He was born again. He had God completely. He, a man in the Godhead. Woo! Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He's describing us now. Our born again. He was the first fruits. All that come after are younger brothers and siblings, right? Have the same inheritance. Get everything that God. We get God. We are men and women filled with God. Glory to God. A whole new species because of the resurrection. Thank the Lord. Amen. It's telling us that through the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus was raised from the dead. And that same power has made us alive or quickened us in the Spirit with Jesus. Amen. The same man who walked out of that tomb 2,000 years ago is still speaking today. Glory to God. John chapter 14 and verse 19. John 14 and 19. Thank the Lord. Amen. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But you see me, because I live, you shall live also. Praise God. Now that's just not a promise of endless life in God's uh, glorious presence. But it's a guarantee of a present life in the glory of God's power. Hallelujah. Everybody ought to say power. Praise the Lord. He has given us more than life. He's given us a life of power and overcoming life. Amen. Back to Romans again. Let's look at verses 3 and 4 again in Romans 1. Romans 1 verses 3 and 4. We just looked at this a moment ago. Concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, which all of us were born of the flesh, amen, initially, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. By his resurrection, we were buried with him and have been raised together and seated with him in heavenly places. We're part of this resurrection, amen, a glorious part of what God has done, amen. Jesus is telling us we can move out of the limits of mere human resources and into the dimension of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Christ invites us, amen, to live in the resurrection resources of a spirit-filled life. Hallelujah. We settle for so much less than what he purchased for us through that death, burial, and resurrection. It's not just about getting us to heaven. As far as God's concerned, we're already there. We're seated with him in heavenly places. This is about getting the heaven to earth. This is about getting the resurrection life of Jesus to flow and fill this earth, amen, with that spirit of God. Hallelujah. Romans 8 and verse 11. Romans 8 and 11. To show you what Jesus wants to do in our lives. This resurrection made it all possible, amen, for us to be like Jesus. Glory to God. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Now, I used to think that meant, well, he's going he's to resurrect me someday physically. Yes, he will, but that's not what he's talking about here. He said if he, that same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you now, if it does, he that raised up Christ from the dead will also quicken or make alive your mortal body the way Jesus' body was made alive to God after the resurrection. So that we can walk in newness of life, so that we can walk in the power of resurrection, in the resurrection power, amen, that is to dominate this world. Glory to God. Spirit life is what he's talking about. Step into the dimension given to us. The full possibilities of Jesus' life working through us. Woo! Hallelujah! That's what we've been doing. Laying hands on people for years and prophesying and all of this. And it's already done. It's done if we would just receive it. If we would just believe it. 
Amen? And that's what's so beautiful about resurrection morning. It's a reminder. It takes us back to everything that God has provided for us and that we should embrace. Amen? Wholeheartedly. Praise the Lord. The resurrection dimension is not the twilight zone. Amen? It's not mysticism. It's not a freak show. Praise the Lord. It's a real, practical, and powerful dynamic for life in the here and now. Glory to God. It's called Christianity. Amen? And it's resurrection morning. And it's glorious. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm going to transition here to, the, to communion, but I'm going to, I'm going to talk a little bit about this before we go right to the elements. So if you have your stuff available there close by, just hang on to it because we'll get to that in just a moment. But in the meantime, I want to just talk a little bit about this for some of you who may not be uh, used to taking communion and freaking a little bit about, you know, I'm, being, I'm going to be judged and all that. No, you've already been judged in Jesus. This is about, this is about identifying with what he has purchased for us through his death, burial, and resurrection, okay? So let's look at Luke uh, chapter 22, and we'll, we'll read verses 15 through 20. Luke 22, verses 15 through 20. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. Praise the Lord. So the Old Testament, as we mentioned earlier, is a shadow. The New Testament is the real deal. It's the real substance. Praise the Lord. Jesus is that true, perfect, unblemished, holy Lamb of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. During the first Passover, we've been celebrating Passover this week. Amen. They killed the Lamb and they put the blood on the doorposts. The blood on the doorposts was evidence that they were protected. Amen? That they believed, amen, what God had told them. And this blood on the doorpost caused the destroyer to pass over their families because God said in Exodus chapter 12, verse 13, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you. Somebody ought to say praise the Lord. Amen? The blood was for the people's forgiveness. The blood covered the people's sins and appeased the righteous requirements of God. Amen? But what were they doing in the house after the blood was applied and the death destroyer was going by? And well, Exodus 12 and 8 says, They ate the roasted lamb and the unleavened bread, and it gave them strength for the journey that was ahead. It wasn't natural strength that they received. It takes a supernatural work of God for two and a half million people to be totally healthy without any lame or blind or, or sick. Amen. Two and a half million. Now we know this lamb was only a shadow of the real substance. Amen. So if the body of a shadow lamb could bring supernatural results, how much more the body of true substance, the true substance lamb, Jesus Christ, do for us? Praise the Lord. Blood was for forgiveness. Amen. And the body and the bread was for divine health and healing. When Jesus took our punishment on the cross, it didn't just bring us forgiveness of sins. It also brought us healing. It brought us our inheritance. Praise the Lord. The faith you have for forgiveness is the same faith that you're going to have to have for healing. But if you believe that you're born again, you're believing that by faith. Am I right? Healing works the same way. Prosperity works the same way. Amen. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 26. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 26. Praise the Lord. Now this is fascinating to me. For as often as you eat this bread, every time we do this, every time we have communion, and you can do this communion at home. You can do it every day. You can do it multiple times a day. God just says as often as you do it, do it for this purpose. Amen? So for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. What about the Lord's death are we showing? What is it we're proclaiming and who are we proclaiming it to? 
Amen? Well, look at Colossians now, chapter 2 and verse 15. I want you to know that this is what we're doing. You know, he tell, he, I, I mentioned this earlier too, but he tells us in another place that we are overcomers by the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Amen? So, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Praise the Lord. So, when we remember Jesus' death, amen, we are also proclaiming to the principalities and powers, amen, that they are disarmed, amen, that they are defeated, amen, because Jesus triumphed over them. Amen. Every time, well, this isn't just about a celebration of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. It's a reminder to us of what we have received as a result of that. And it's also a reminder to the devil to back off. You have no right here. You've already been defeated. You are a defeated foe. You're just a lot of hot air. Just a threat. Just intimidation. Praise the Lord. When you release your faith in the finished, complete, and perfect work of Jesus at the cross... Every knee has to bow and every tongue has to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord over all. Hallelujah. And when we're taking communion like this, that's exactly what we're de declaring. And the devil knows it and he'll run like his hair is on fire if he has any. Praise the Lord. So in the midst, hallelujah, of intense spiritual attack. And that's what we're going through, church. It's not, this is not a virus, just a pandemic human thing. This is a demonic attack. This is spiritual warfare. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we're going to experience victory when we believe that what Jesus did on the cross is greater than any attack the devil can bring. Praise the Lord. I don't know how it'll end, but I know it will. And God will be the reason for it. And he can end it any way he wants to. I'm good with it any old way. Praise the Lord. Because I know that on the other side of this thing, there is going to be tremendous blessing and reward for the people who have stood fast and believe what God has said. Not only are we a testimony to our families and to one another, but to the world around us who are basically in freak city right now. They're all going nuts. And all you, you turn on the TV and all you hear is somebody else whining or complaining or crying or carrying on. Now, I'm not trying to take away from the seriousness of this at all. And for the people who have lost loved ones, God forbid. I, I mean, we pray for you and love you. But look, we have to fight. This is a war. He told us we are in war. Amen. And war is not easy. You've got you to have the guts to stand sometimes. You don't have to. It's, not, it's all right to be afraid. It's how you handle the fear. You can have a little fear. Just don't let fear dominate you or paralyze you. Amen. Make it motivate you, motivate you to fight back, to take the word of God and use it against the enemy. Amen. 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 So in the midst of intense spiritual attack, we're experiencing victory. Amen. We're going to experience more victory. Amen. Because Jesus was raised from the dead. He didn't just die a martyr. He rose again. And he's alive forevermore. Amen. So if you find it hard to believe still that eating a piece of bread can bring your body health and wholeness, look back to the first garden. God knows what he's doing. Amen? Adam merely ate a piece of fruit. Eve just ate some fruit. And it plunged the entire human race into sin. And that sin is what brought disease and ultimate death. It gave the enemy authority in the earth. Amen? So God, in his infinite mercy and wisdom, devised a perfect so solution. I love this about God. He'll slap you with your own hand. I'm talking about the devil. Amen. The old saying, so good, make you feel so good, you want to slap your granny. It's, it's, it's only if you had my granny. Uh, but since the simple act of eating by Adam brought disease and death, God ordained that the simple act of partaking of a piece of bread would bring health and wholeness to his people. Praise the Lord. So now let's take our bread. And if you can say it with me or after me or just <clears throat> agree with me as I say it, we take the bread and we say, thank you, Jesus, for your broken body. It's for our healing. Thank you. That by your stripes, we are completely healed and whole. I believe and I receive. Hope you're not hearing this, but this is crunchy. Now take the cup and say, thank you, Jesus 
for the blood of the new covenant or the, the, the promise, excuse me, of the new covenant in your blood. Your blood has brought me forgiveness and washed me of every sin. Thank you that your blood has made me righteous. And as I drink, I celebrate and partake of the inheritance of the righteous, which is preservation, healing, wholeness, and prosperity. I receive it and I believe it. It's resurrection morning, yes. and it's glorious. Yes. God bless all of you. Enjoy the day. Celebrate the day. Celebrate the victory that Christ has given us. No weapon formed against us will prosper. Amen. Believe what God has done, and we will see the righteous prevail in Jesus' name. God bless all of you. Have a great resurrection day. We look forward to seeing you back here next week. Thank you again for participating in the service. Thank you for supporting the church. And we will be together again before we know it. Amen. God bless you all in Jesus' name.